Welcome to another episode of Distorted Opinions. I am once again joined by Matt and Ted as always, and today we're going to be talking about some great bands that sadly only put out one album. You've heard of One Hit Wonders. These guys would probably be considered one album wonders, but hopefully by the time we're done talking about these bands, you'll feel inclined to go check out their albums. There's a lot of really excellent highly underrated stuff out there. So I know the band I'm going to talk about, I'm really disappointed that they didn't do more, but I'm going to get more into that in a little bit. But why don't we start with you, Matt? Who did you pick for this episode? Sure. So one hit wonders, one hit albums, you know, in my eyes, if you came out with something that the public's going to be able to, you know, listen to, maybe even see, you know, I think you're golden. Um, you know, obviously you made a, you know, high impact to go ahead and have, uh, you know, um, personalized uh, music and uh, records and videos and anything like that to go ahead and get your name out there. But the band that I'm going to be talking about, they still exist today. Yes, they do have some albums that are coming out. However, I feel like the albums ever since uh 1999 till now haven't been up to par but the band i'm going to be talking about which is in my own personal opinion a very underrated band with so much success behind it is the band third eye blind uh for 90s babies out there okay you probably haven't been conceived when when third when third eye blind uh you know came out with this album that's okay educate yourself after this episode because it's a phenomenal album but the album i'm talking about is their self-debut third eye blind uh released by electra records in um on march uh 2000 i'm sorry march 20 uh wow i can't even talk <laughs> i can't even talk that's how excited i am <laughs> third eye blind self-titled march 26th 1997 and you know what i think i'm gonna pull out my notes here because that probably makes sense but the songs i'm gonna be talking about on the album losing a whole year narco narcolepsy uh self-charmed life jumper graduate how's it gonna be thanks a lot burning man good for you london i want you the background motorcycle drive by and finally god of wine yes some of those songs you probably heard in the movies or on the radio uh, especially Semi-Charmed Life, mm -hmm. uh, How's It Gonna Be an Even Jumper. Um, those weren't the only albums, uh, I'm sorry, the only singles off the album. They also came out with The Graduate, okay? And they also came out with The Losing of a Whole Year. Um, this band is what I would consider or what is known in uh, the market today as a, uh, as a sleeper hit, okay? They came, out with, they came out with this album, and it really didn't get recognized as much, okay? It was just a, hey, I'm a band, I got an album out here, and Electro Records is like, okay, well, we'll see where it goes, and if it sucks, we're dropping you. Well, guess what? Eventually, it was very slow in the beginning, and then to this day, they are certified not once, twice, third, fourth, or fifth, but they are certified platinum six times to this day, just that album alone. Now later on down the road, a couple more years later in 1999, they'll come out with the song. They'll come out with their album called Blue, and um, they got the song called Never Let You Go. Um, when I was introduced to um, when I was introduced to Third Eye Blind, I actually was introduced to them when they released their second album. And when I first heard it, you know, again being a first first time listener, heard the single, I wasn't a big fan of it. So, but it got my curiosity to say, well, who is this band? So again, I went back to the first album and my mind was blown away. I've had it on CD a couple times. Uh, then Napster came out and I illegally downloaded the album, put it on my phone. Okay. And then I eventually <laughs> felt guilty and I paid for the album. Um, <laughs> so it's an offset, but... And, uh, but eventually, you know, that's how much I love the album. And it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And I think what's great about it is, is that, you know, Stephen Jenkins, he is a, he's a phenomenal writer. I think his lyric writing is um, so genuine, so creative, and, um, and passionate as well. And I know listening to, you know, this album, especially, you know, this is high school days. Again, we're not going to, uh, you know, age ourselves. But listening to this in, you know, middle school and high school days, um, you know, I can relate to it. You know, there's there's some songs in there that are, you know, 
uh, alternative rock power uh, power ballads, and then there are just regular, you know, soft, slow ballads and whatnot. You know, there are songs out there on the album that I find phenomenal, like, you know, The Background and God of Wine. You know, again, they're both rock albums on the album that, you know, you can grab the senses listener, um, you know, especially with some of the lyrics that are relatable. And, uh, you know, the way that Stephen writes is he doesn't exactly write to one scenario. He writes to what I would consider the unknown. How would you perceive it, okay? And I think that's just ingenious to think of that because it could be taken in different ways. You know, is it the or is it the? Is it a potato or is it a potato? Is it a tomato or is it a tomato? I don't know. You figure that out. But that's what's great about his lyric writing is because it just, that when you listen to that song, you could relate it in so many ways. Take, for instance, an example, the background. When you're listening to the background, okay, you know, he's talking, this is a part in the song where they're talking about, you know, changing hospital hospital uh, sheets. Okay, and then there's talking about, you know, well, you're not, you're not here anymore. Well, as a listener, when I first heard this song, okay, well, he's thinking about someone that, you know, passed away. Well, listening and reading more of the lyrics, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not so much about someone passing away, it's just someone not here anymore and reflecting on that. Um, so what was great about it is, is that as a listener, I didn't get one, but I got two different types of perspectives when listening to that song, just in general. Um, and I think, again, you know, like I said, you know, Stephen's writing is creative. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I haven't had the, the, the due diligence of listening to the latest album that they just came out with uh, called Screamer. Um, but I'm going to, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, may have my, may have a different perception, but f as far as I know, my album, which I would consider, you know, that one hit wonder album is, uh, you know, this 1997 self-titled album, um, um, third, uh, third eye blind, uh, semi charm life. You know, I think everyone knows when, you know, that song, you know, even if, you know, you're a kid in diaper, I'm pretty sure that my kid in diapers right now knows that song because again, it's that popular. Um, uh, for anyone that's listening to this episode, okay, here's a challenge, ready? Personal challenge. If you're a karaoke guy like me and Ted, I know you're a karaoke guy as well. So we could even take this up as a challenge right when this pandemic ends and whatnot, but try singing semi-charmed life on a karaoke scale, the full song, not the radio edit. Okay. Where he takes out, you know, the, the fast lyric, uh, aspect of the song. Um, let me know because I'd be curious to see, I, to this day, I haven't heard anyone fully completely go from beginning to end without messing up some of those lyrics. Again, it's phenomenal. It's great. Uh, I wish I could tell more about, you know, different types of albums and whatnot. And, but I'll go on a complete, you know, tangent as far as, you know, uh, different types of aspects on that album and full albums, but I'm going to hand it over to, let's go ahead. Uh, Ted, let's hand it over to you. What did you pick for your, for your album? Well, just a comment quickly on your, uh, third eye blind, uh, band. I do recall that it, you listen to a majority yeah, among, amongst the different groups. I know you live like Google dolls and, you know, there's definitely, as we're learning guitar, as we've talked about in prior uh, shows, and, you know, we'd have an acoustic guitar and you'd just be strumming different things. And uh, I definitely know uh, Third Eye Blind was definitely a band that you were always into back in the day. Uh, so not surprised it was your pick for the, uh, this particular episode. It's amazing. But, <laughs> uh, on a different note altogether, as you can expect, uh, sure. I am the resident metal, well, well Heavy metal. I mean, Kayla, like you guys like metal. I'm not trying to take that away, but uh, <laughs> you're the resident death metal Ted, guy. Ted's death the metal. metal. All right, we'll take that. Uh, so my pick uh, for today's show is uh, a band called Moto Grader, which uh, I was fortunate enough to see back in 2003. Uh, this particular band uh, started in 1995 in Texas. And they, and they wound up moving to California. They started adding people to, in their groups over parties and things like that. And um, then they created an instrument, which they dubbed the Motograder. And for those of you that don't know, a Motograder is a, a bunch of metal. It, it's basically a, a large contraption, uh, kind of laid flat like a keyboard in a sense but it has or a, a flat base that's like table high if you will 
and it has uh, industrial cables across it and they use a slide uh, and makes a very unique sound. It's very deep, it's very bassy. Um, so that was their bass guitar for a good period of time is this particular motor grader. Uh, obviously set them apart, it's a unique. Uh, the band uh, was very tribal. So they all, all the band members, uh, seven, six of them, because the group varied over the years, uh, would basically be black and white body paint. And the lead singer was all white with red paint. So um, their music style, it's metal, but there's uh, rhythmic tribal beats involved. There's some music samples because 2003 era, you know, early new metal age, you know, Slipknot and, you know, yep. having a DJ and all of that, that was the cool thing. Uh, so Motor Grader was on that train. Um, let's see, uh, their first album, it is a self-titled album uh, released in 2003. Uh, this particular one in my hands, I got signed by the band, um, which was really awesome. I had never heard of the group before until I saw them at Loka Bazooka in 2003 at the Fitchburg Airport. And um, their just general stage pre presence blew me away because I was already a fan of Slipknot. And then you see an a army of tribal dudes run out on stage and just be crazy they uh had some mounted drums on the uh, front of the stage similar to what slipknot was doing to for the other per percussion end uh for those other musicians and uh, they, it just took over and i was really blown away uh and so that particular show made me a mega fan and uh so i started following them uh years on this particular album uh is uh technically 22 tracks however all of the odd number tracks are 31 seconds or less and they're instrumental um and they have uh, a, sa a message uh in reverse on at the la in the last five seconds of the each of those odd number tracks it's a very unique concept um but they have a bunch of hits on this album <laughs> my notes disappeared for a second there we go uh so for example suffocate song was featured on the texas chainsaw massacre movie soundtrack uh makes new design texas what's that well that's originally yeah they're from texas why not have a song in texas main chainsaw uh, massacre? of course uh new design another hit of theirs was featured in the mania of wrestlemania um film in 2003 their motor grader was named the best band uh, by Hit Parader magazine in 2003, which I used to buy Hit Parader a lot. It was like this underground metal yep. magazine. Mm -hmm. It was super cool. Uh, and uh, their song Down uh, was also featured on the EA Sports NASCAR Thunder in 2004. So 2000, this particular album put them everywhere. They're out and you know, everyone knows a bunch of their songs, uh, especially on the, the rock end. And um, so I talked about seeing them in 2003. And then after all of that success, in 2005, the band announces they're gonna go on a hiatus and officially broken up in 2006. Shit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, one fun fact uh, at the time, the lead singer during this era was Ivan Moody. And if you know Ivan Moody, he was the singer of Five Finger Death Punch. Yes, he was. And so Ivan wound up moving over Five Finger Death Punch and still there. I mean, how many albums they put out already? But um, the rest of the band, they got a new singer in. They warmed in 08 when, and they uh, went on a couple of tours. And then they were supposed to go on tour in 2011 with Mushroom Head, but they disbanded a week before the tour. Double shit. Oh, man. Uh. Uh, they reformed again. And then they were they actually played in Knotfest in 2014, but the singer left in, by, in December of 2014. Mm -hmm. So all of that to say it's hard having a band with so many members because every time they you regroup, there's some 
you know, probably some feud and it just doesn't quite hold together. Um, so with that being said, they finally put a group together long enough to put out an, another album in 2017 called Desolation. Uh, David Elveson from Megadeth's oh, record yeah. label put out this album. Um, and I don't know if they're still together. I have, I, like, well, that will be honestly, triple shit if they're not. everything <laughs> was launched on this album and then just the constant, like put coming together, breaking apart. It, it's just so inconsistent from a fan base that you'd have to know them from the way beginning. I feel mm-hmm. like to really hold on to that and where they're all based out of California now, sure. You might see them at a show, but you have to be in California. Right. So yep. you, you, I don't know. There's, I'm not finding a lot of new stuff from them. And I mean, you're just preparing for this. I discovered they had an album in 2017, but mm-hmm. I haven't heard yeah. anything about them. Right. Besides, mm-hmm. I still listen to this and this is still great. Right. And, what are you and yeah, and to, and to sit in to piggyback off of what you're saying, Ted, you know, that it's, it's hard from a fan base, just like where you mentioned that when, you know, the, the band is having, uh, you know, turnover and they're bringing these new members. And I mean, yeah, it's great that you could have new talent in, but it definitely shifts the, the climate of the band and it makes it different from when the band originally came out. Um, obviously, you know, like an example, not, you know, from a metal standpoint, but, uh, you know, bands like, uh, you know, Taking Back Sunday, okay, they had a whole shift in, uh, you know, band members and, you know, listening to them in the very beginning and now it's completely different. Well, there's so many different styles, you know, yeah. new thoughts, new ideas going into it that it can't mm-hmm. possibly be the same. I mean, it, it is a bunch, you know, different flavors are coming together at that rate to put together a different album. And um, so, you know, definitely is a factor i mean for any band not just this one for sure but um Mm -hmm. i think the the dead air you know 14 years between albums really uh put a damper on it so that makes it i think why it's back to being an uphill battle if they still choose to go as hard as they used to because they certainly were out everywhere in a bunch of places anyway video games and whatnot but then they just it it just fizzled out so Mm -hmm. um one last piece because uh in preparing for this i realized that uh when i saw this band uh kayla's choice of the week is uh, did also perform at this particular venue um i also have the ticket from the show of course we talked about concert tickets i have all my concert tickets and i went to too many uh but this one in particular uh is a strawberries uh ticket for any new englander that bought their concert tickets at strawberries um but this the 2003 local bazooka ticket um coincidentally signed on the back by raw um but uh kayla your band played alongside motograder during this particular show uh and tee it over to you who is this band and what album is this yeah so uh, first of all i just want to say you said you've been to too many concerts i don't know that you can actually (laughs) go to too many concerts first of all um didn't we say that in an episode it sounds familiar (laughs) probably the concerts episode would be my guess because ted had that book of tickets that he broke out for that it's only it's only right here yeah we we didn't even (laughs) didn't even right graze the surface of the concerts that Ted's been to. Um, Ladies so, and gentlemen, for those that are tuning in for the first time on this Distorted Opinions episode, check out our concerts episode and you'll see what we're talking about. Yeah, great right. plug. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to yes. say that. <laughs> yes. Um, and we'll have to revisit that topic again at some point too because we didn't graze the surface on that at all. Yep. But um, yeah, so you know, the band that I picked for this episode is a band by the name of Revis. Uh, they were well known for their yes. uh, two, two tracks in particular, Caught in the Rain, which was the big one. And the one that kind of got me into them was a track called Seven. And those two songs were played pretty heavily on the radio. Yep. But they had a lot of other really amazing songs on their debut and only album that were just fantastic. Um, These guys were based out of, hopefully I'm going to pronounce it right, Carbondale, Illinois, under the name of Orco. (laughs) 
And I guess they moved out to L.A. in 2001 to try and get a record deal. And they discovered that there was a band in the U.K. that was already using the name Orco that had been around for a while. So they had to change the name of the band. They had a guy who was a longtime friend in guitar tech that had been involved with the band by the name of Jason Revis. And they decided to name the band after him. So they went by Revis. Uh, they were picked up in 2002 by Epic Records. And... They released their debut album, Places for Breathing, in May of 2003, and on May 19th of 2003, their hometown, which was apparently a very small place, not unlike the town that we all grew up in, actually proclaimed May 19th, 2003, Revis Day, in honor of the band, so just prior to the release of their debut album. Um, the album sold 10,000 copies in the first week, and no, it debuted... Just going to cut you off there. I think we yeah. should have, uh, for our last recorded episode when we did the five and a half fuse, we should have talked day. to the yeah. We should have talked to the town. What were we thinking? That's such a great uh, idea. Fourth, fourth of July, five and a half fuse day. Yeah, hey, no, no, <laughs> we'll we'll leave Fourth of July alone. We'll pick uh, <laughs> July third. Sure, yeah. any day. <laughs> July fifth. There <laughs> we go. Yeah, sorry. Uh, that, uh, it yeah. has to. Be, it has to end with. It has to have the, a number five in the calendar day because. Of, Five and fused. Oh, definitely. But, uh, it oh, should be May fifth. May fifth. <laughs> I mean, May the fourth is five. already taken. Five. <laughs> five. <laughs> Sorry, oh, completely goodness. derailed that. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean these guys, from the sounds of it, came from a town that, I mean, it was a little different. It sounds like they were more from kind of a farm town, but as far as the size of the town, it was probably pretty similar to where we grew up, and there weren't a lot of, from the sounds of it bands or bands that made it particularly big and it sounded like these guys kind of made their way up in that area pretty quickly and then that's when they decided to relocate to LA and try to pursue landing a record deal uh, but it was a big deal when they did get a deal and they released this album so their town decided to honor them by declaring May 19th 2003 Revis Day um, so yeah, the album sold 10,000 copies in its first week and it debuted at number one on Billboard's Heat Seekers chart. And as Ted mentioned, these guys performed at WAAF's Local Bazooka in 2003 at the Fitchburg Airport. Uh, I actually didn't know that until I was doing a bit of research last night and I came across somebody uploaded the, the footage. They must have put out a DVD of them performing Caught in the Rain at Local Bazooka and I can drop the links to that in the descriptions of this episode if anybody wants to check that out. Um, but, you know, unfortunately they put out the one album, they did a you know, some touring, and then in 2005, the band split, and they were dropped from Epic, and a lot of the members went back to Illinois, and I guess formed new groups, and they started doing different things, and decided that they just didn't want to, you know, be a part of the band anymore, but they took about a five-year hiatus, and in 2010, they got back together again, and when I say they got back together, I mean... It wasn't the original lineup. I think the guitarist and maybe the drummer, um, or maybe it was the bass player, decided they weren't interested in regrouping, and so they had to find some new people. So it wasn't the original lineup that they had had in the uh, Places for Breathing recordings. Um, and they, they decided they were going to release an EP, and they were set to release... The second album in May of 2011, they had recorded everything. Apparently, they didn't have a contract with the label at the time, and the label was working on a contract, and they decided, well, we'll start recording everything now in anticipation that we're going to get a contract and we'll have all of the tracks ready to go to release this album. And apparently, they finished the recording, and the label handed them a contract, and the band didn't feel it was a fair contract, and they couldn't come to an agreement with the label. And the label basically held their recordings <laughs> hostage and refused to release the album. So they had talked about re-recording everything and releasing it without a label, That's which is just a insane. Bad no. position to be. Oh man, because yeah. to me, I've, when you're talking about it, I'm like, oh, so studio time's very really expensive. You know, yeah. obviously, maybe they've got a loan and they're expecting this payout to cover it. Right. But uh, it sounds like the record label was behind the they whole screwed. thing, holding them. Yeah. They oh screwed man. Them over well, and, and, and it's and it's true. And I mean, 
you know, I played, I played shows where I've had represent our representatives from these companies and, you know, I'm just going to say it cause I don't give a shit. Uh, these A and R rapper, these A and R record reps, um, you know, they're snakes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, the reason why debut albums are phenomenal is because it comes with, uh, you know, the generic and I'm sorry, the genuine talent of these bands that create these songs. And then you bring in these third party idiots that say, yep, this is the sound you look for. And guess what? You get shit afterwards. Um, so, you know, Hey, if you're a rep out there, I'm sorry, you're a snake telling like it is. Um, and it's really unfortunate because, you know, Revis, you know, I've, I've, I've owned places of breathing three times. Okay. Uh, Did you download one... it illegally and then feel bad and buy it illegally? And... <laughs> no, actually. And then you lost the CD, so you bought it again? Actually, <laughs> no. Actually, what I did was I, <laughs> well, I learned from my mistake. You overplayed Number it. Number one. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know you can do that out. with the CD, though. <laughs> I, so I heard, I heard Revis, uh, and I think it was on AAF, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Caught in the Rain. And yep. then again, at that time, uh, the only TV that I listened, I watched was music video. So I, of, of course I watched the Cotton in the Rain music video, fell in love with it. Um, went to the music store and I bought places of breathing and I played it so much that I actually got it stuck in my, uh, my car at the time, the CD player. Then I played it so much that when I was running, because again, we didn't have, you know, MP3 players or C- you, you had the CD and, you know, getting the jogging pants and, you know, ran the wrong way and it fell out and broke the CD. So went out and bought the album for the third time. And because again, it's just one of those albums that are just phenomenal. But, um, you know, my personal favorite off that album is uh, Cities Beneath. Um, mm. that's also another a good phenom- track. phenomenal, uh, track off that album. But, uh, well, and I, I'm just going to say anybody who listens to that album is going to be hard pressed to find a song that's not good on that album. Every single song is phenomenally written and mixed and it's just a great, great album. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the songs cause obviously my song of the week is going to be from that album. So I'll talk a bit more about that when we get to that point, but you know, it was just a fantastic album. And, and like you said, Matt, you know, it's really unfortunate. We talked about this a bit during the episode that we had Paul on where we talked about the Seattle grunge scene. We kind of derailed a little bit in the middle of that and started mm-hmm. talking about, uh, you know, kind of how the suits, so to speak, have kind of ruined the music industry a bit like yep. you get bands that are really great that you expect will become big because what they're putting out is phenomenal and then you get bands that are you wonder how they've managed to last as long as they have because their stuff is not great you hear a lot of like i think we even talked about this in that episode there's a lot of crap on the radio right now and there's a lot of you hear either the same 25 or 30 songs or you hear a lot of bands that sound exactly the same and they're not very good and i feel like unfortunately revis is one of those bands that fell into the category of a band that really could have been phenomenal but they got a bum deal from the record label like the I, i don't know what the details were of the contract but the band didn't feel it was fair and couldn't come to an agreement. And the label basically said, well, that's too bad. And then wouldn't give them the songs, the songs with the exception of a few that were put out as kind of promotional releases for the upcoming release of the album. None of, I think they recorded like 15 songs or something. The rest of them have never seen the light of day short of other members of the band have gone on to be in other bands and they've said that they've i guess released these songs in some form with these other bands but you know it's one of those deals it's kind of like you know what ted was saying about uh, you know his pick where they had a number of years in between and the band had regrouped a number of times and it's not the same thing when you don't have at least a large number of the bass you know, original members of the band, and particularly, we've talked about this too, vocalists, you lose a vocalist, and if you, especially if the vocalist is somebody with a very distinct voice, you know, Lane Staley, Kurt Cobain, uh, Chris Cornell, any of those guys, I feel like their front man, Justin Holman, is one of those guys, he's got a very distinct voice. When you hear his stuff, you know who it is, and 
the songs that Revis did put out that were supposed to be a part of that second album release, they're kind of a different direction from what Places for Breathing was. And the only thing that really distinguishes it as still being Revis is the vocalist yep. because That's you hear the vocals. the vocals and you know it's Justin. But, you know, it's it's really, it's too bad. I loved Places for Breathing. Like I said, I challenge anybody to find a song on there that isn't good. Every single song is fantastic. I've listened to that album from front to back for years now. It's still a regular on my playlist. It's just a great album, and it's unfortunate that those guys didn't do more, but uh, my understanding is Justin is actually now doing more. I think, Matt, you were saying he does comics now, uh, like artwork for yeah, comics. Really, yeah, freelancer for, like, you know, comic drawings and whatnot. I had the pleasure of um, reaching out to Justin one day um, to go ahead. And, well, first off, I just stumbled across uh, – you know, his, his social media, um, profile. And, um, it was obviously, you know, it was open to the public and I was like, Oh, you know, Hey, was this my space? Is. Huh? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't I'm know, a music I don't era. Even... You've got me thinking of like you know, a little early two thousands. I, I don't even, I don't even know. Like, I mean, well, this was, only, this was like, I want to say like within the seven, eight years, you know, actually maybe more recent. Ten. So who, who knows? I mean, there's so many social media accounts right now, but anyways, you know, um, you know, I was writing a song at this time and for some reason, again, you know, for unknown artists like me and, you know, some, you know, uh, you know, underground artists out there that, you know, may not know, you know, sometimes you just gotta say, what the hell, try it out. So, you know, I sent a message to him and ironically, he messaged me back and said, you know, what are you thinking? So it was great to know that. What did you uh, ask him? Well, I sent him a clip because of what he responded, but what did you say? Right, right, right. So first and foremost, well, first and foremost, I'm not going to be that creeper that's like, hey, you want to sing on my song? And be like, who the are you type of thing? <laughs> so no, I obviously I introduced myself and, you know, it was a message and it was his profile before anyone's thinking, hey, Matt, this is some idiot that you just like got probably caught. It was on. really my account. Yeah. I'm kidding. So, <laughs> so, so anyways, he, um, you know, he then had he had a message that said hey follow me on 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 i think it was like i don't know maybe instagram or something like that uh pictures yeah it must be that um and clicked it and it was him so it was him so obviously it was him but it was just a generic question of hey i got this song i sent him an audio clip i was like you know what do you think about maybe collaborating or something like that because again i'm thinking hey he's kind of a known guy it would be great to you know maybe have that check mark off on a, uh, you know, a bucket list that, Hey, write a song with someone that is known. Um, so, but he got back to me and was like saying, Hey, when do you want to, uh, you know, let's talk. Uh, unfortunately, obviously conversations dropped at that point. And then um, I think there was one day he liked a picture of mine on, on, I think uh, Facebook or Instagram. I don't know. Again, I don't know. Um, but it was just great to know that that small type of conversation uh, shows the type of personality. So in my eyes, as someone reaching out to someone that is known, uh, you know, call it maybe the popular kid in high school. Okay. The fact that he reached back out and was like, Hey, let's, let's talk. Um, just goes to show the type of personality. So, uh, from what I last seen, uh, he is still writing, uh, to this day. I think he is playing in a, uh, I, th I think it's like a Christian band. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, obviously completely different from Revis. But uh, it, he was great to hear. Obviously, you know, I told him, I was like, hey, I'm a big Revis fan. Showed him the receipts of the Places, of, places for Breathing uh, albums to show that I'm not... Some, All three times you bought it? Indeed. Yep, I did. I'll have to pull it out somewhere. <laughs> oh, no, but, um, and, oh, and I think I even showed him a picture on my, on my phone with the paid, with the paid uh, album. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's what made him respond to think like, Hey, you know, this guy isn't some freak, but, um, you know, maybe yeah, maybe he did. Huh? Maybe he did. Maybe. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It, it, Revis, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't heard the album, just like what Kayla said this weekend, go listen to it, stream it on Spotify, YouTube, whatever it is. Begin to end, 
And, you know, I'm sure you'll feel the exact same thing as what, you know, Kayla's mentioning. You know, it's just a great, phenomenal album. It's unfortunate that's its only album. But, hey, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, I'm sure with them, if the fan base is really strong enough um, that they would go ahead and uh, I'm sure that door is not, is not fully closed. And for your point, um, the fact that you made a comment about how he was, he reached back out to you uh, and, and that obviously improved the perception of that particular person. I mean, that, I mean, without repeating myself in a prior podcast as we can easily do uh, for the concerts episode, when we talk about meet and greets and, you know, certainly there's good ones and then there's bad ones yeah. and, you know, the, whether, it goes really good or really bad really mm -hmm. changes the way you think of the band you love, still love the music anyway but you're like oh, that guy's a dick like okay. it, it like for <laughs> for example my experience at said show when i met motorgrader was great the guys are awesome you know we shook hands with them all it was really cool on the other hand i met raw who at the same concert and they thought they were, or it appeared to me that they were uh, the, you know, son of God, if you will. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just very, yeah, not engaging, just uh -huh. it's another thing for me to sign right here and on to the next, like... And, so it just kind of like pushed off like you're nothing, like you're a number. Yeah, and, and, but I already had a couple of great experiences. I was pumped. Do you not, do you call my name just came out? Uh, right. and obviously hit everywhere and every, it's still massive hit. And, mm -hmm. uh, I'm meeting this band. Uh, dude, I'm pumped. I want to talk to you guys for 30 seconds or whatever. Right. Not even. I was, uh, so that's unfortunate. 17 years later, it's like, Hey, you guys suck, but I like your music. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, personally it's, you suck, but your music's great. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny too. Cause you know, like you said, the differences in some of the bands and like I've met a lot of bands too. And I did not unfortunately get the, the pleasure of meeting Revis. I don't think I actually discovered them until closer to like late 2004, early 2005. But, you know, I didn't even talk about another band, which I could have spent quite a bit of time on, which was Injected, which was another band that only put out one album, which again, phenomenal from front to back every single song on that was amazing and they were a band that i did get to go meet and those guys were really cool like they played an acoustic show at i forget which newbury comics but it was a newbury comics i want to say maybe north attleboro um that my dad had brought me to and they played the acoustic show and then they did a meet and greet and signing after and it was like not only did they sign everything and take pictures but they were super cool about just chatting with everybody and i remember um i don't know if you guys remember alicia um i don't want to give her last name because she's not part of the show but she had gone with me and at the time like i was huge into their album and um i think it was called burn it black and she was like, hey, by the way, she's a huge fan. She's wondering what tuning you guys play this song in. And they were like, oh, yeah, no problem. And they like they <laughs> they basically taught me how to play the song. Like it was really, really cool. So you get the bands that are like, I don't I, I think fortunately my experience has been there's a I'm going to apologize right now. If you're watching, there is some sort of bug flying around. It's driving me nuts. Um and also my cat came through here and made noises earlier. So you're going to hear a lot of noises I try not to have happen during the show, but eh, here yeah. we are. Um, yeah. But, you know, I don't think I've met any bands that have been total jerks. I think I've been fortunate that they've all been really cool. Um, and while I have not met Revis, I did see a podcast interview on YouTube last night that somehow I am just seeing now and it was recorded three years ago with Justin from Revis. And, he, you know, from what I could see of that interview, he seems like he's a pretty down to earth, you know, cool guy. So, you know, it's really unfortunate when a band is kind of full of themselves and don't want to treat the fans well, and I think a little part bit nicer. of that is that is it just they're supposed to do signings from this hour to this hour and it's now they've gone whatever over. night on the tour and it's like oh come on like i'd rather 
party or see, yep. you know, talk to somebody else. And this is just like you're doing your time, if you will, because I feel like for the couple of folks that I've met, it definitely does feel that way. But yeah. Um, you know, again, not all shoot. Right. Uh, Vinny Paul, nicest, right. nicest right. guy. And the, right. he's legendary. So, right. I mean, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I think it just depends on how people are feeling at, at and, that particular day. Zach Wild was the same way. I met him and he had, I don't know how many people were in the line to meet him. His manager was the one that was kind of like, you can only get one thing signed. You can either get something signed or you can get a picture, but you can't do both. And so we, I, I brought somebody with me. We had gotten something signed. That's actually, I have my uh, Jackson Randy Rhodes V that I had signed by him. And then we got back in line again to be able to get a picture with him. And I remember when we finally got to the table again, he had been there for a while and he had signed a lot of stuff. And I think he was. Did you put a wig on to pretend to be somebody different? No, 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 I didn't even. And nope, I think. Uh, it's, it's not I, me. I, I, I want to say familiar. it rained. I want to say it rained too. So we were standing outside in the rain waiting to meet him because I vaguely remember being soaked by the time I got in. But, you know, when we went back up again to get a picture with him, he was like, Oh, yeah, no problem. You could have gotten a picture with me the first time around. It's like, well, but your manager said no. Your manager said one or the other and sent us on our way. So, but again, he was just a really cool dude. And he'd been there for what seemed like hours just signing people's stuff and taking pictures with people. And I'm sure he was probably tired and ready to get out of there. But that didn't, you know, he still treated everybody with respect and, and right. took the time. And I understand, like, there's a time and a place, but, you know, if you're at a signing and that's what you're there for, I mean, yep. yeah. I, I've heard horror yeah. stories. That's unfortunate that those guys were like that. But my experience overall has been that the bands that I've met have been super friendly and, and willing to chat for a few seconds before they send you off on your way and so you just keep, need um, to keep on meeting bands and eventually you'll pick your your least favorite that's all very true <laughs> i met and i met kirk and kirk was super nice and we talked about that in the um Other the episode two. And greets episode yeah and yeah so you know so yeah anyway we've i think veered off a little bit into a different yeah. different that's show right. again here but uh you know my point was that from what I've seen of interviews online with, with Justin, anyway, he seems like a nice down to earth guy. And, you know, those guys were a great band and it's too bad that they didn't go further than they did. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's just the music industry. Unfortunately, they push some bands that I wouldn't consider to be good bands while not pushing bands that I think should be getting pushed, but I'm not a record label executive and I don't make the big bucks. So I'm just yeah, a peon who pays the money <laughs> to, it, to see it, them. It's true. And I mean, you know, it'll be my last, it'll be my last time, you know, talking smack with the, with the A&R rep. But again, that's what the show's about. Sort of None of us right? are getting so, labels hey, to sign us right now. <laughs> listen, listen, I played a show. Okay. And I think, did we hear this on a prior episode? I, I think, I think, yeah. I think yeah. we should save our listeners. If they want to hear that story, you should go back to the other episode. Yes. Okay. Because yes. this is going to be a That repeat. would be the Seattle grunge scene episode, oh, for those of you who are gotcha. wondering. <laughs> yes, with Paul. Yeah. Yep. Hey, listen, for, for, for anyone out there, that, okay, that's recording music, I want to keep doing it the way that you're doing it. Okay, be happy with it. Um, and the internet's and a, your best friend right internet now. Internet right now is the best. Yep, internet's best friend. Home studios. Take the time to learn how to record your own stuff. Pro Tools, GarageBand, um, you know, Personas, anything like that. And from a guitar player, and Kayla, you could re relate to this and whatnot. Okay, if you're a guitar player, okay, you're comfortable with the type of guitar that you play. Don't have some idiot try to tell you that, oh, well, you need to have a, uh, a Gibson in order to fit the profile. Mm. Tell him to go f off. Um, other than that, Kayla, you might want to bleep that part out. <laughs> <laughs> that we only had one this episode. There have been some that were far more, and I've just decided to mark them explicit and not bother. All right, well, <laughs> flip a coin. <laughs> no, but i think this is a good opportunity to go ahead and jump right into uh what maybe the the song of the week the song is. of the week I yeah think i so. agree all yep. right okay well i will go ahead and you know what i'll just jump right into it okay it. guys my song of the week what do you think it's gonna be 
Uh, Any guesses? Semi charm kind of life? No, but off the same album. So it's going to be a song called Motorcycle Drive By. Um, I think, listen to the song. Um, obviously, you know, the, the song is about, uh, you know, break up, but at the same time, just grow a pair and move on. Uh, this song starts off in acoustic, and Ted, Kayla, you know me, I'm kind of like a folky type of guy, love the acoustics, and also another part of me is like the rock side. So this song in particular starts off soft, it's just, a, uh, just, a, um, uh, just an acoustic, and then, you know, sings the first verse, sings the first chorus. And then when he's going into the second half of the second verse, starts powering into, you know, these guitars and really the drums. And then finally, he just bursts out the last, um, the last part of the chorus, you know, I've never been so alone, but yet I'd never felt so alive. And it goes right into a rock anthem. And hearing this is just, I don't know if it's what's more equivalent to just getting over something fast because when you listen to this song and for those that know and have heard the song before you you'll understand that when you're listening to the song it's just say hey you know what okay life's gonna move on and we just go he wrote this song stephen jenkins he wrote this song actually for about a girl his girlfriend that was in new york city at the time she broke up with him and he drove on his motorcycle and just had all these thoughts going through his mind and that's how he came up with the song it's literally about okay well i just you know, I had all these plans with this girl. Now, what do I do with all these plans? Okay, I can mope, okay, and get nothing done, or I could just get over it. And that's what the song is about. It's about, okay, you know what, life sucks right now, but hey, tomorrow's a brand new day, and we'll move on. So, Motorcycle Drive-By off of the 1997 self-titled album, Third, Third Eye Blind. Um, so, with so that, I think you're description of that song kind of ties into a similar uh vein of how i perceive uh new design on the motor grader album uh that one is more or less uh you know one of the lyrics um start over leave it all behind uh which for you know going into uh basically senior year and you know your your school days are changing and so in, like in a time for us all uh where that was you know you're going to go to college or you know life is changing the new design kind of kind of hit me in the you know in the brain in the feels if you will uh for you know the way it was written and how it sounds and uh i don't know the new design really my monitor keeps on going to sleep uh New Design really uh, does quite well. It's got a lot of m melodic parts to it, um, but you know, definitely one of my favorites uh, on this album. I mean, you can't go wrong. Suffocates wonder, it's you know, just super good. Down is their, I think their number one type. You know, uh, hit for the whole album altogether. But I mean, I've listened to this album fifty. 75 times all the way through easy mm -hmm. but uh, uh new design though really stands out so if you've never heard motor grader I, I think new design would be a good introductory track uh to figure out what you're what they're all about so stream it ladies and gentlemen that's yeah, right and motor grader as a reminder we have a spotify playlist with all of our song of the week picks that we link in the description of every show so that track Matt's pick, my pick, all of our picks from previous shows, as long as they're on Spotify, will be in that playlist. So easy place to check it out. But I highly encourage people, if you check out our playlist, to click on the band and check out some of the other stuff they have too. Because all these bands have some other really great songs that we're not necessarily talking about in our pick of the week because we could be here all night just talking about all the great songs on the mm -hmm. album. So be sure to click that link in our descriptions of the shows and check out the song of the week playlist. And I believe you can subscribe to it too. So it'll add it as one of your playlists on the side in Spotify. Um, with that, Ted, was that it yep, for you? Yep, that's pick? All right, perfect cool. time to tee it up and All right, over. so uh, my pick obviously is going to be a Revis 
track off of Places for Breathing and probably one of the lesser known tracks if you're only familiar with the stuff that was played on the radio, but a fantastic track in my opinion. The last track on the album, Look Right Through Me, uh, which is acoustic with uh, some cool, almost cosmic sounding electric guitar kind of woven in throughout it. And it's got, again, fantastic vocals. All of the songs have fantastic vocals. Justin has really unique and fantastic vocals. I'm using the word fantastic a lot, but that's the only word I can think of to describe it. Um, is it fantastic? How are his vocals? It is fantastic. Uh, so, um, that's it's, a great it's a great F word. It, it is. That is an F word that we don't have to censor on the show. Fantastic. Um, it is fantastic that I don't have to censor that F word. Um, but anyway, so yeah, it's, it's an acoustic tune and they have some other tracks on the album that have some acoustic in them, but they tend to have more distorted electric guitar. This one is entirely acoustic. It's a really great song. Um, you know, again, a, a little clip will play of each song, but I highly recommend checking out the full song. There's actually a bonus track right after it which if you had the CD, you had to wait for it to skip. Like, I don't know if it was 15 or 20 blank tracks that they had after that to get to the bonus track. If you're listening on Spotify, I think it's just part of the end of Look Right Through Me. But um, yeah, it, this song was on heavy rotation for me. If I had been listening to it on a CD, I probably would have actually worn out the CD. But I had it on it an early. Yeah, it it does. Um, I had a very early, like the first generation iPod, and so I used to listen to it walking around campus in college. And just a great song. Check it out. Um, so with that, that's my pick of the week. Look right through me by Revis off of Places for Breathing. We had some great picks, some great bands this episode. We're just about and an hour too. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're up against the clock here on this. But um, if you have a music related topic that you'd like to talk about on a future show, whether it's one album wonder band that you listen to or anything else music related, feel free to reach out to us and see about being a guest on the show. We would love to have guests on the show. It's a ton of fun. You can reach us through email at distortedopinionshow at gmail.com, or you can contact us on any of our social media platforms. You can also leave us a message over on Anchor at anchor.fm slash distortedopinions. And you can find all the platforms that the show is available in audio-only format on, as well as all of our social media platforms, which if you're not following us on Facebook and Instagram, you should be because we post reminders and outtakes and over there. And YouTube, that's right right uh unfortunately youtube i do not have a short url to give because you have to have 100 followers so please follow us so that we can get a much easier to remember url to than be fair i don't even follow i'm gonna fix that right now all right so we're up to <laughs> one one follower closer to being able to get our what custom is, url that's on me <laughs> it's Ted's but, fault. but with that being said in one uh, you know you know on behalf of, you know, us, you know, we say this at every episode, um, you know, you guys are what's making this happen. Uh, we're all three of us are enjoying this. Uh, every guest that we've had so far has uh, stated to us that they've really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for everyone who's leaving us messages, uh, reaching out to us about being a potential guest. Um, you know, Obviously, you know, we're doing something right and, um, you know, we're, we're having fun with it. We're hoping that you guys are having fun with it. We're hoping that you guys are enjoying these episodes uh, because, I mean, get ready, get your popcorn ready um, because, you know, we have so much more uh, coming in. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, again, just like uh, if you want to be a guest, reach out to us. But thank you for everyone so far who has subscribed. Um, and sent us messages. And mm -hmm. sent us messages. And um, even reach us out uh, personally saying, you know, hey, you guys are doing a great show. So, you know, thank you. We just want to say thank you. That's all right. So with that, thank you all for tuning in. And we hope to see you next week. We'll have another great show for you. So we'll see you then. Indeed. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe.